did the Big Ten commissioner just shoot down Florida State and Clemson? You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers. Thank you so much for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Guys, I know that the sports may not be sportsing the way you want them to, but this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Continuing our week-long coverage here at the ACC Kickoff Media Days, we are going to have interviews on this episode with Chiron Drone, star quarterback from Virginia Tech, Preston Stone, star quarterback from new ACC member SMU, top running back from Cal, Jaden Ott, to if you haven't watched him play, he's going to shock some people, and star Stanford receiver, I know I'm going to butcher his name, impressive young man, Alec Io Manor. I think is how I say that. He's going to be joining us here. We'll have conversations on Locked On ACC. Uh, I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes alongside Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. So, you know, Kenton, we now have dueling conference media days going on as the Big Ten kicked off today. And this is what Commissioner, Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti said on possible expansion. Quote, we're focused on 18. We had to do a lot of work just to add these four new schools. We're really comfortable where we are. We have to get this conference right. This is where our focus is. And I also noticed that when Petiti was talking about the four new members in the Big Ten, like he went out of his way, Kenton, to talk about the four AAU universities that they're adding. AAU is the research designation that Florida State and Clemson do not currently have. And I... I, feel like he went out of his way to deliberately say that and again like I'm, I'm not saying Florida State and Clemson will never be in the Big Ten but it, it seems like all these commissioners are, are offering a similar message right now we're not adding anybody anytime soon let's stop tiptoeing around it right because you and I have tried to be delicate I've rewatched some of our shows we, we may have tried to be too delicate about this thing the Big Ten is saying forget those people in very generous terms they're saying hey not now not now it's not happening and here's the thing it could be, I was before on the side of, oh, this could be legal reasoning. This is all legal mumbo jumbo. The AAU designation thing was completely uncalled for, completely unnecessary. What did that add to the conversation yeah. besides creating an us versus them, creating a situation where they not like us and guess who's in the they that's not like the rest of the big team? Clemson and FSU. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a moment where I – I'm starting to believe, and I hope, again, I hope that the court cases work out fairly, equitably, all that good stuff. This is starting to become a situation where the more these commissioners talk, I'm starting to become more concerned for Florida State and Clemson. Not from a standpoint of nobody will add them. That's not the concern. The concern is nobody will add them at the price point that they're seeking. Right. Nobody will add them as a full member right away. Because what is the competition and incentive to do so? What's what's the incentive? It seems to me, you know, obviously nobody would collude with another conference because that's illegal, very illegal. Yeah, and just to thing. add to something to this, we, we were we were both talking off air. Like it, it almost, I, I don't know if these guys are, are tight with Jim Phillips, the ACC commissioner, but it, it all it almost seems like the three of them, Big Ten commish, SEC commish. And Jim Phillips are like working together here. Now, I, I don't, your mark from the Big 12 is the wild card. I, I don't think he's necessarily like working with any of these other commissions, but it, it almost, because Sankey and uh, Sankey from the SEC and now Petiti from the Big 10, they're both basically saying the same thing to the point where it sounds like they rehearsed what they were going to say about expansion. Yeah, at the end of the day, you have to think about it like this the Big 12 is wanting to do anything they can to get that big dog status back. Yeah. They want to be in the big dog seat again, so they're willing to take more risk. They're willing to do more to get there. The Big Ten and the SEC right now. This is pure speculation, purely my opinion. I'm not having. I'm not saying I have a source that that will uh, confirm this. 
they are in a position of our boats are steady and extremely strong. Yeah. Why would we potentially bring somebody in that's going to go Tasmanian devil and tear this thing up because the Big Ten is making more or the SEC is making more and you're in the opposite conference? Why would we want to bring in somebody who would do something like that, which both of these teams have shown they will do? So, you know, all in all, I'm I'm not all that surprised because, again, when you are the – I'll say this. Winners focus on winning. They focus on themselves. They focus on what they can do better. Losers are focused on everybody else. They're focused on what are they doing? How do I do this? It's very clear that the Big Ten and the SEC right now, they're the winners of the group because they're not looking at nobody else. They're saying, hey, right. we're good. We got the, We got Oregon. We got Washington. We got Texas. We got Oklahoma. Expanded would be nice. Are you a bigger brand in Texas? I don't think so. So we're good. Yeah, outside of maybe Alabama, I don't know if there's a bigger brand than Texas when it comes to college sports, college football specifically. And, you know, again, I'll I'll reiterate something that you and I, we've both been in concert on this because, again, like, you know, some people are like, oh, you guys are just haters and you love the ACC so much. No, eventually – Florida State and Clemson are going to get out. We're not saying that's not going to happen. You and I have just been saying not anytime soon. And right. I notice a lot of the other folks out there who who cover this stuff have been saying, oh, the ACC is going to collapse by June 30th of 2024, and Florida State's going to declare by August 15th that they're leaving, and they're going to be out next year. It's become very clear that this is a slow burn, and these, yeah. these settlements are not happening anytime soon. It's going to happen eventually, folks, but I think you're looking at 2026 at the very earliest, 2027 being a little bit more conservative. And to what we were just talking about with the AAU designation, Florida State may be able to get that in two or three years' time. So this may, the slow burn of the process may end up working out for them to get into the Big Ten. Uh, my understanding is, I'm not an expert on academics, but my understanding is Florida State probably a little closer to that than Clemson is. Uh, but Florida State may be able to get AAU designation within two to three years. So the timeline may fall into place. But I, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, we, we just spoke about it yesterday, Kent, in the comments of the ACC commissioner. Um, I've never seen Jim Phillips that animated. He is, he is committed to this legal fight. And the ACC lawyers will do whatever they can. And there are strong arguments on both sides, right? I can understand, you know, Florida State bringing up the, you know, alleged shady dealings of the previous ACC commissioner. And and obviously, you know, the, the TV contracts aren't fair necessarily. But Jim Phillips brought up the point that Florida State and Clemson happily signed that grant of rights twice. Not once, but twice, 2013 and 2016. And... By the letter of the law, that seems like a pretty strong argument, right? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sure there are loopholes to anything, but the fact that, hey, now they're unhappy, well, they weren't unhappy to sign that long-term deal, you know, eight years ago. Now now the goalposts have moved. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's, you know, that's the unfortunate part of this thing. Again, like you talked about, the contracts were signed. Whether or not you agree with everything in it, you had the chance to voice that opinion, abstain from the vote, vote no, not sign it, whatever the case may be, you did sign it. That's yeah. that's just the reality of what we're looking at here. So I mean at the end of the day, it, it is what it is, but I'm I I highly doubt that we are looking at a situation here where again the Big Ten or SEC adds these teams as as full members right away, because why would they? Right. Yeah, no doubt. And so listen, uh they, they're they're stuck together for the time being, whether it's two more years or three more years. Florida State and the ACC are stuck together for at least a while longer. Clemson and the ACC, same thing. Uh, but we're going to be talking with some awesome ACC football players throughout this episode. Uh, had a chance at Media Days to catch up with a quarterback. Kenton, you and I, we've hyped up Chiron Drones a lot. And yeah. we're going to chat with Chiron Drones. We're going to chat for, with Preston Stone, the SMU quarterback. High expectations for their offense. And Preston Stone, he said it. They've got the best receiving core in the ACC, SMU. Uh, Stone Stone dropped that he believes in his talent. We're also going to talk with a guy who might be the best running back in the ACC, Jaden Ott from Cal. He's certainly in that conversation. And uh, one of the better receivers in the conference that you probably don't know about, Alec Iomander from Stanford. So, folks, we're only getting started. You want to keep it locked right here. ACC Media Day's coverage continues right here on Locked on ACC. Folks, I know you're having fun this summer as I am. 
with FanDuel. And guys, I know, you know, the Stanley Cup playoffs, the NBA playoffs are over. NBA Summer League, Miami Heat were crowned uh, Summer League champions in Vegas. We've had international soccer going on. MLS soccer is happening now. UFC fights, boxing. We've been having so much fun on FanDuel. You can place your preseason wagers, by the way, for ACC football. ACC champion, you can get futures odds on that. Over-unders for every team in the conference, guys. You want to check all of this out at FanDuel and all summer long. FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch today. Make sure for your second listen, you check out our shows. I host Locked on Canes every day. Uh, Kenton hosts Locked on Wolfpack. So for uh, for Miami, their day at ACC Media Days will be tomorrow, Wednesday. NC State will be there on Thursday. So uh, we will have coverage on our shows as well, Locked on Canes and Locked on ACC. Virginia Tech returns the highest percentage uh, of returning talent from last year. How important is it to have so many guys back and to have that continuity? Well, this is real important based on, like, you don't have to learn anybody new. You already know what uh, – where everybody capable of, you already know how they play and what they like. Uh, and it's just a big thing with people coming back. You already know, like, there's a lot of experience going on. So uh, we're really excited about how this season is going to turn out and what we're looking forward to do. So I'm just really excited to get this first game going. You finished the season so strong last year. Does it kind of feel different heading into this season? Like, this could be the year you guys put everything together? Uh, yeah, it feels different uh, just based on, like, the mindset everybody has with everybody coming back and knowing that everybody came back for a goal is to win the ACC, and we're really capable of doing that, especially with how our schedule lined up and how everything uh, lines up with it. So uh, it's a real good feeling. It's just a mindset of – and it's a different confidence booster that's going around in the locker room, and we're just really ready to work uh, to get phase for it going with fall camp and then ready to go out there in Nashville and get the job done. In the, in the presser, I heard somebody – Ask you about Michael Vick spending more time with the program. Has he given you any advice? Oh, he's gave me advice just to be myself and go do what I usually do. Just uh, not really worry about the outside noise and just go make plays and go execute and lead your team. You just said in there that you think about opening up the offense more, throwing up. Tell me about that receiving core. Why do they allow you to do that? Uh, just the receiving core just know as long as I get one of them the ball that somebody's going to go make a play no matter what. And then Coach Bowen trust me enough to make the right play and not make the dumb decision, make the smart decision, and go execute whatever he draws up. How good are, are your, because we've talked a lot about your big four, you've got some depth. How good is that receiving core this year? Uh, it's really good. I feel like they're one of the top, if not the top receiver room in the country, they definitely are one of the top receivers room in the country. And I'm excited that they get to go showcase that this year. They were very productive last year, and that was with Ali. Yeah. Not really playing. Yeah. Uh, what does he bring? What does he add to this group? He's add another veteran receiver that is a big play threat. You never know what you get out of Ali, whether it's a jump ball or him making a guy miss and then just going for a long touchdown. So I'm really excited. I get to play alongside of him, me and him real close. Uh, I always live next door to each other since we moved in. But uh, that's my boy, and I really felt for him last year, and I really hope he just stay healthy and then just get the job done this year. And you probably remember this throw, but he had a perfect deep ball to Daquan in the Rutgers game that he dropped. <laughs> and then after that, he was, he was pretty money. Yeah. But uh, what you think about his ability to get behind the deep as a stretch to get separation, uh, what does he bring to the offense, and how confident are you in him running under and hauling in those deep balls? I'm real confident about him being a deep threat, but I'm really excited to for him to show what he's been working on throughout – the offseason of not just being able to be a deep threat. Like, yeah, he's fast, but he can run routes, he can make people miss, and that's just what he's been working on this year, just being able to be a receiver that can, you can line him up anywhere to do whatever you want him to do. So that's what he's been working on, and I'm ready for him to showcase that this year. Karen, you got four road games in your first six to start this season. Is that something that you've noticed already, and how are you kind of mentally preparing? How's the locker room preparing for that? I mean, at the end of the day, a road game and a home game is the same game. Uh, it's just taking it one week at a time, knowing our opponent, and then just uh, going out there, executing, and getting the win. Whatever it is, that really don't matter. You still got to go out there and win the game. So, uh, yeah, I've seen the schedule, but I'm not really worried about where it is. It's just going out there and then just go 1-0 each week. You had to take Uber from Atlanta to Charlotte. <laughs> Tell us about how that came about. I don't know how uh, that's getting out, but uh, you're, you're a coach. oh, yeah, yeah I took a, 
my flight got canceled uh, two days ago to leave Atlanta to come to Roanoke. So I knew I had to be ready to go leave the school for media day yesterday. So at four in the morning, I found an Uber that was willing to take me to Charlotte Airport that I can fly back here to get here, uh, to get here before we had to leave. So as soon as I got in the Uber, I went straight to sleep just cause I've been up all night. And then I was just glad and I really thanked him for just being able to drive me to Charlotte knowing that's a long way. Shoot, I, I grew up watching Jameis Winston, you know, a bunch of really good players at Florida State, and um, getting to play against them is going to be a, we're going to have a work cut out for us, but it's going to be a blast. What type of quarterback are you? You know, people don't know you from the FCU games, the AJC. What type of quarterback are you? Um, I think I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Um, there are only a couple of games last year that came down to the fourth quarter, but you know, I've been saying this all day. There's, there's not a single game in our schedule that's a layup. So I'm excited to go the distance with a bunch of teams in our league and um, play in those, those games where it comes down to the, to the end of the game. Isn't the communication with the coach gets the How do you think that impacted the development? Or are you looking forward to being able to do something that the NFL needs for? I am. Yeah, it's gonna. I think it's gonna help a lot. Uh, I think it's gonna be really good for college football. Um, I'll have, get to have a ton of input um, on field with Coach Lashley, and he was even telling me on the play on the web period, he's gonna be like, "You make a bad play, you throw an interception. I'm gonna be joking with you on the helmet." So um, that's gonna be really fun to uh, to have that opportunity to have him in my ear this year. How do you think it'll help your development? Um, well, I think as an offense, it, it gives us certain things where. Um, you know, we are a very up-tempo huddle offense, but I was telling Coach, I love the command of being able to have guys in the huddle look people in the eye and say, like, all right, so it's third and long here. Maybe we got two downs. We don't need to get everything here. I think it's going to help us a lot with um, just right now communication, and um, it might be able to help us in certain situations to uh, just communicate to my guys. Last year you were just taking over as the starting quarterback. This year you're back. You've got all the experience you had last year. Does that help you, you know, just get off to maybe a quicker start offensively uh, this year, you think? I think so. Um, you know, as a competitor and as a quarterback, you, you want to be thrust into uncomfortable situations. And um, we played several big games last year, TCU, Memphis, OU. And so having played in those those big games last year and um, you know taking those hits week in, week out, um, I feel great going into this year knowing that there's really nothing I haven't seen yet. Um, and when it does come to when it does come to those those championship rounds, I'm gonna be ready. Preston, you feel like you're gonna be able to compete right away or you think it's gonna take a while to adjust to this level? Absolutely. We'll, we'll be able to compete right away. Um, I think regardless of who we're playing on Saturdays, if we can show up and execute our game plan and play our football, we've got a chance to win every game on our schedule. Preston, last season you guys played three power conference opponents, including one that's in the ACC in Boston College. You guys went 0-3 in those games. Has there been talk in the locker room about using those games as a sort of like measuring stick for what this leap is in your power conference? Um, I think we, when you take a look back at those games, there wasn't really one kind of common underlying reason of why we lost those games. Um, stepping into this season where I think every game but our first two games is a Power 5 uh, conference game. It doesn't necessarily matter as much you know, what sticker is on the helmet of the team that we're playing. It's like I just said, can we go and execute our game plan? And I think we, we have a lot of veterans, a lot of uh, really strong leadership on our team. Uh, a lot of guys who are coming from Power 5 schools that transferred in, so we'll, we'll, we'll be comfortable when those big games come into town. And there's, I saw you earlier playing College Football 25 over there. Uh, what do you think of the game, and what do you think you're rating? It's awesome. Uh, it's uh, you know I grew up playing NCAA 14 um, forever, and uh, I think they, they did me pretty well. I'm pretty content with an 88. Um, so it's been it's been a blast. It's been a blast playing that game, and um, it's honestly a dream come true. There's a lot of excitement around your offense. Talk to us about some of your playmakers and who fans should watch out for. Yeah, I think um, I think we have the best receiving core in the conference. Um, you know, we had I think it was seven guys that were close to 400 yards last year, um, which is pretty unheard of. It's a it's a great problem to have when you have too many guys to get the ball to. So um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see Brashard Smith, uh, Miami transfer. He'll be a great utility running back, returner, receiver. Um, Every receiver coming back except for Curly um, 
is uh, is going to be very strong. Um, you know, I, I've been saying I think we have two sets of starting receivers, so um, we got some big time playmakers like Keyshawn and Jay Hud, and then. Um, RJ is the best tight end in the conference, and then Jake and Junior are really difficult to guard in the slot. What has Coach Lashley meant for your development? Can you say one? What has Coach Lashley meant for your development? He's yeah, he's the best coach I've ever had. Um, coach Lashley means a lot to me, not just as a as a football mind, as a coach, but as a mentor and, and a friend. Um, he's um, he's a great coach, and with how he coaches. Um, he doesn't try to fit you into a certain mold of quarterback. He lets you do, he lets you play your game and puts a lot of trust in you to call plays that you want to run and lets you run the offense in the way that best suits you. And um, he's helped me grow my game a ton. Good stuff there from a couple of quarterbacks, Chiron Drones and Preston Stone. And we're going to talk with uh, a couple of players who are new to the ACC. Well, Preston Stone is as well. We're going to talk with Alec Io Manor, star wide receiver from Stanford and star running back from Cal, Jaden Ott. That dude is really, really good. You want to keep it locked right here. Don't go anywhere on this brand new episode of Locked on ACC. So, you know, I'm excited to play against the team in the ACC. Can any of these close schools recruit you? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Where is Yale? Yale, yeah, yeah, it's up in the east. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So this, this is really <laughs> and then they good. told me they didn't have any uh, scholarships. It was just financial aid. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, bro, come on. Dog. So this is your opportunity, really, to, for, for everybody in the East Coast to finally really see you. Yeah. 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 That's uh, not even just me, just the, the team as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah, how excited are you to be able to showcase your skills to a, a lot of new eyes on you that maybe weren't watching Pac-12? No, I'm very excited. I feel like, you know, football on the West Coast might get overlooked sometimes. Um, a lot of people in the South and on the East Coast don't really know um, because, like I said earlier, like nobody's going to stay up till 2 a.m. to watch an after dark game on the West Coast. But, yeah, that's what I'm most excited about, to show people that you know how we play ball over there on the west coast have you guys had discussions about dealing uh with the schedule because i think cal is going to lead the acc in travel miles this year yeah nobody's worried about that that's not something we're looking into we we're, we're uh, doing everything we can to make sure that our bodies are prepared i mean travel will not be an excuse for any any loss or anything during the season you're coming off an excellent year. Uh, how do you look to follow that up this season? Working harder, man. This offseason was one of the hardest offseasons I've worked so far. Uh, really pushed myself to, to the extent. And so I'm excited to see, you know, I took my game up a level during this offseason, I feel like, um, as far as taking care of my body um, and, and just acting like a pro. You were talking about your rating earlier. What was it in the game? Uh, my overall, I think, is a 93. You happy with it? I mean, yeah, I, yeah, it's smooth. It's smooth. <laughs> it's all right. Do you have a go-to play in the game? Yeah, option or halfback direct snap. Okay. But all I do is run the ball. You don't throw it at all. I told all my receivers, I said I'm not playing with them in the game. Like, <laughs> you got, I told them they're not going to touch the ball. <laughs> so you run it literally the whole game. Literally. Do, do you have another team besides Cal? Because obviously you all can't play with Cal. So I'm sure yeah. have you ever switched to anybody else? Uh, I don't like to. I think who have I played with before? I think I played with. Uh, yeah, I don't know who. I, I think I've only played with Cal, honestly. Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, how'd you end up at Stanford from the Deerfield Academy? Yeah, up in the Northeast. Yeah, it's actually even more than that. I'm actually from Canada originally. And so when I was playing in Canada, I knew I always wanted to play college football um, in the States, right? Because you see all these media things on YouTube and on Instagram, right? Um, and just lucky for me, this guy in Toronto, his name is Justin Dillon. He works for 738 Scouting. Basically, what he does is he sends Canadian players down to boarding schools um, to play football and get a chance at NCAA. And so he sent me to Deerfield Academy. And I knew I wanted to go to Stanford from the beginning. And so it was just a matter of me getting the offer and then finally committing. And so it was really a more how did they find me out in the Northeast. And I think it's just uh, I had really good coaches. And I think Justin did a really good job with uh, getting my name out there. 
Was it, was it tough to leave your family and go board school? Yeah, I think it's harder on your family actually than it is on you. Because when you leave and make a big decision like that, like you're pretty com compelled, like you're convicted. Um, I had a goal that I had in mind and I thought that this was the best way to achieve it. But for my mom, I'm like 14 years old, leaving the house to go live in a boarding school, right? It's pretty unfamiliar territory, right? So I think it was a little bit harder for her just to let her son go. Because at the same time, my sister had just moved out to go to university um, up north in Alberta. And so like everybody's leaving the nest at once. And so I think she was a little bit sad about that, but she knew it was for uh, a greater cause. Did you grow up watching CFL or did you have or more college football? Like how did you? Honestly, like I grew up watching and playing hockey more so than okay. anything because right that's what every young kid does in Canada um, and so like I went to a few CFL games but really not that much and I think I just played football really um, and then like I said I started seeing all these things on YouTube I want to say like UTR under the radar highlights and like Nike opening I see all these things you're like damn like, I want to I want to play out there one day and I, I thought to myself like I, I know I can play with these these dudes and I'm, I just got lucky that I got the opportunity and I took advantage of it. Hmm? Yeah, I was. I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deerfield Academy has produced like a lot of D1 talent. What was it like going there at first and uh, being yeah. around guys who, who were also kind of the same level of talent that, that you were? Of course. I actually went to Petty School first in New Jersey. Okay. And then the football pro program kind of went through some things there. But I think that was my first real exposure to like real Division One talent. Uh, I want to say everybody on our starting lineup on both sides of the ball ended up going Division One there at Petty. And the same, I want to say that the same thing for Deerfield. And I think it just brings like a new perspective. I'm, like I'm coming from Canada. Like I'm by far the most talented player on every team that I play on, right? And then you come to America and you're the, not, you're the least talented. I'm the worst <laughs> player on my team my sophomore year. And I think it just teaches you that it's not all about talent. Um, even more so, it's about how intentionally you work and how willing you are to take in the knowledge of the people around you. And so like my first years in the States, I really just tried to learn from everybody and just put all, all of the work into like deposit those skills. And I think those lessons that I learned when I was the worst player, like really helped me to keep getting better over time. How surreal is it that a team from the West Coast is in the Atlantic Coast Conference? Yeah, it's it's definitely <laughs> different. Um, <laughs> it doesn't make a, a whole bunch of sense in terms of us being on in the Atlantic Coast Conference and we're actually in the Pacific Coast. Um, but I'm excited just to play these new teams, right? We're so used to playing the Pac-12 teams and seeing the Pac-12 teams and seeing that that type of play style. But now that we're in the ACC, right, it's going to be a whole different uh, brand of football. And so I'm just excited to see how the DBs play, how the defenses play. And you, really and, you and Cal are going to have more travel than anybody else in the league because of you know, having to come east more than once. But how much more pressure or you know, emphasis does that put on you as a student? You know, they, the NCAA always likes to call you guys student athletes, but it makes it a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? Especially at an academic institution as, as strenuous as Stanford. Yeah, I think in, in general, just to get into Stanford in the first place, you have to have very good time management skills. Um, and I think so. I think we're already equipped with those skills that you need uh, to be able to play an uh, ACC type schedule where we're traveling across the country. So I th don't think it'll be that much different for us because we're already used to managing our time a lot. Um, and so I think we're actually like pretty well adapted to be able to transition. Now in terms of play style, how different is the ACC from what the Pac-12 was? You know, I really don't know yet. I'm gonna, as soon as we get into fall camp, we're really gonna start digging into these defenses and seeing what they actually do. Um, so yeah, I really don't have a, a solid answer for you there, but uh, I'm happy to find out what, what that is. You were the most productive freshman receiver in the country last year. Did you anticipate that kind of early success? Yeah, I, I'm not the type of person to really set um, like numbers goals, like really define goals like that. Like, oh, I want to get this many yards. I want to get this type of accolade. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I think what I did tell myself is that I'm going to put everything that I can into this. And 
um, just leave all that I have out there on the field and try to come back every Sunday and be proud of the effort that I put on the field. And I think if you can control that type of thing, the rest of it will fall into place. So I really didn't have anything in mind, but I just wanted to put my best self out there. And when you do put your best self out there every game, good things are bound to happen. And so I'm not surprised that good things happen um, because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put my best self out there every day. What is the reaction around campus, the program, just about this whole ACC thing, the demise of the Pac-12, mm -hmm. just old folks, you know, makes us sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I don't think it's as tough for like football players, but all of our other sports that travel a lot um, and for multiple games in a weekend, I think it's going to be a lot tougher. And so I think they're kind of a little bit resentful of us, so all the football players are making us travel across the country every other weekend, right? Um, so I think it'll be a little bit tougher for them. But like I said, uh, Stanford, to get into Stanford, you have to be a different caliber of person. And so I think they're very prepared for that. And I think they're going to do as well as they had in the past and win multiple national championships and all the other sports. But I think it'll just be a little bit more strenuous on them over the season. Awesome hearing from some of the best and brightest football players in the ACC. Uh, it's also, Kenton, it's nice to talk to guys from Stanford and Cal. And, and they I, we asked them about the travel situations. And, you know, from Stanford and from Cal, they're very adamant. We're not worried about the travel. We're ready for this. Footballs are pre so you know Cal Jade not he's not worried about twenty thousand plus miles of flights this year. Of course, he's a football player. That's what football players are supposed to say. Obviously, that puts them at a grave disadvantage to the rest of the conference. But as a player, you're supposed to. It doesn't matter. Put the ball down wherever we go, right? So what that you have one of the most academically rigorous um, schools in the nation, not just the conference in the nation. So what that you're at one of those. Put the ball down. Wherever you want it, that's how we're going to give it to you because that's what you're supposed to do and say as a player. I, I'm i excited to see him play in ACC. I hope that everything works out for him. I hope that they maintain uh, relative health as much as possible throughout playing this gladiator sport with all that travel. But, you know, this is – you would be remiss to say that that is not a concerning amount of travel. Well, if you guys enjoyed the show today, make sure to hit the thumbs up. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. He is Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. We'll talk to you again tomorrow on another episode of Locked On ACC, part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.